Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how you can set up RKE on your VM. This is a very much anticipated uh, tutorial. Everybody in my subscription list has been asking for it. And let's get started. So on this left hand side here, this is going to be my control node. And this is this two over here on the right hand side are going to be my worker one and worker two nodes here. So let's SSH into my control node here first. Start off by uh, SSH. Uh, using PowerShell here, and this is the IP address of my node controller. So I'm gonna go here, enter some magic password, and you're in. And I'm gonna basically do sudo su so that I'm uh, logged in as a root user. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but uh, I'm gonna log into the uh, second VM, which is 195 here, and then log in with a password. And again, do the same thing, log in as a root user, and then do the same thing on the last one here and this is going to be IP address 196 here again log in and then do sudo su you're going to have to do sudo su for everything because uh, all the commands that we do today is going to require some level of a root user access here let me clean up this guys here so the first thing I like to do uh, when I set up uh, RKE2 would be to disable the firewall on all three VM machines here so the reason behind that is that I want to keep things simple and not have issues with firewall which which I might be such <laughs> spinning around looking for the problem but nevertheless um, the idea is disable the firewall and once you're ready to set up once you already set up your rancher and all that stuff then you reinstate the uh, the firewall and all that stuff so that's how you disable the firewall by the way all the commands I'm gonna show today will be on the description of this video try not to copy or you can pause it if you want but it takes a bit of effort uh, I think it's simpler to copy and paste from my description into your terminal session there so that being said uh, next thing I like to do would be to do update app update on all my VM and then I'm gonna install a couple of packages here this one here and then I'm gonna run or rather you're gonna run required to run app upgrade like this this minus y actually deliberately say yes to everything you know how when you do up, upgrade they will ask you do you want to install it yes or no yeah if you put a minus y it will not bug you so mine went relatively fast yours might be going a bit slower because uh, yours might not be updated but I updated both or rather all three of this uh, VM before I started this tutorial here so let me clear that up so those are the few steps you have to do to update and upgrade your packages there so we're gonna start off with RKE installation on the control node here this is the command that you're gonna to have to use to install the latest version of RKE but if you want a specific version of RKE this is the command that you're gonna to have to use It's on the lower right hand corner of the screen here so I'm gonna uh, install the latest and the greatest in here and gonna hit enter here as you can see it did install version 1.26.9 Nine. that's the latest at the time of this recording here after that um, I'm gonna have to enable the service the RKE server service so that uh, it starts when I power cycle this particular uh, VM so hit enter here and then after that um, I'm gonna start the uh, RKE service like this and once that's done let's check the status of that service it should be showing green and active and running like this if it's running successfully to get out of this press ctrl c to exit and let's clear this thing up so there's a couple of things you're gonna have to do um, one of them would be to set up the kubectl here so i'm gonna run this command to set up a sim link and then uh, i'm gonna have to set up an environment variable so that the uh, token can be uh, can be referenced from the uh, kubectl and just as a test let's run kubectl with this command and you should get something like that so right now there's only one panel or rather one pane itself the master pane or the control pane but as soon as I install the agent on this two here uh, then you, you'll see that the uh, the other two entries will start appearing at the bottom here okay the next thing I have to do is uh, let's get the IP address of the machine we know the IP address is 194 here we're gonna use this IP address for all the rancher communication another thing you want to take note is uh, the uh, uh, note token itself you can get the note token from here just type all this get this information displayed on your screen because you're gonna need IP address and the note token when you install the agent on both of these 
uh, VM here. Okay, so uh, let's start by uh, worker one here. I'm going to run the command in parallel. So this is the command to install RKE2 agent on this VM here. And uh, if you like to install a specific version of the VM, uh, so for specific version of the uh, RKE, uh, the command is at the bottom right hand corner of the screen here. Just enter those with those flags and you will install that version that you want. I'm going to install right here and I'm going to install the latest and greatest on both of my worker nodes here like this. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and create a directory where I can install my uh, my token. Uh, so this is the directory I've uh, created. The, the directory doesn't exist to start off with. So next, I'm going to have to set up the uh, YAML file. I'm going to use a text editor called Nano. Uh, and I'm going to create a file called config.yaml. It will show as empty file on my text editor. I'm going to do the same thing on the worker too as well. And you're going to enter this information here into your uh, config yaml here and you're going to do the same thing over here but we're going to copy it and paste it across here so but um, like that so the ip address your rke server ip address we know how i say you have to get this in place you can just copy like that easily and then go over here and then just paste it in here and likewise on worker 2 you're going to do the same thing like that and for the token you have guessed it you're going to copy this token this looks like a two line token but it's not it's just one line and this basically got wrapped around at the, at the second line itself so i'm going to copy my clipboard here and basically paste it over here and when you paste it it will look kind of funky if you've never used uh, nano before or any of the linux text editor you can see that Nano has resulted in using this less than sign, but if you scroll all the way to the far left, you can see the rest of the character appears. So don't be alarmed. So same thing, you do the same thing over here. You're gonna delete everything, and then you're gonna paste it in here, the token, and then you can double check and make sure that tokens are there. On Nano, to, uh, to save, I'm basically gonna press Control X like this, here and here, and I'm gonna say yes to save, and I'm gonna, create this or write to this file here and click enter here, and you go back to your terminal and I'm going to do the same thing over here and then just as a double check I'm, I like to normally go back and then check make sure that the content is still there because if the content is still there not there I'm sorry uh, when you start and enable your um, your uh, RK2 agent services it will not run so it's just take two seconds to verify okay so those files seems to be there so next what I'll do is I'll go ahead and enable that service um, so that it will run when you power cycle this machine. I'm going to do the same thing on the worker node as well. And then after that, I'm going to start that um, RKE2 agent service like this. I'm going to do the same command on uh, worker2 as well. Once the command prompt comes around, so basically you type system status RKE2 agent. And if the RKE2 agent is running correctly and well, you're going to get the status of active and running like this. And then you do the same thing on the worker to you should see the same result like this so this indicates that they are running correctly and they are all good so let's control c to exit out of it and then uh, if you were to swing across to your uh your server here now i'm gonna clear this guy here so you can see it clearly and enter this kubectl get node like that output as wide you should be able to see uh two additional node in here uh, so this one is a is a batman node as you can see right here is a control node itself this is what it was here at first but these are the two nodes queen and bane itself so queen is here it's showing it's not ready and then bane is here showing it's ready like that so it takes a bit to get started um, because maybe it's because of the vm I'm not too sure but uh nevertheless you should see three nodes in here but if you have an additional two more nodes you get four nodes all together the remaining four nodes should appear as soon as your uh, RKE2 agents are running. And a couple of pointers here. You can also run uh, get port command here to see what is running and what's not. You can see uh, some of them, like this RK2 Nginx, is currently being created. So like I say, it takes a bit to create a few of these uh, containers and images here. Let me clear all this here so that we can start fresh here. So the next few things I'm going to do would be to set up for the uh, ranchers using helm so um, if you don't know your host name you can basically type this way to look at it but this is not the file that we're editing we'll be editing this file here over here 
we're going to add the IP address of this machine itself, the RKE2 agent itself. The IP address was 192.168.44.19. And the uh, associated DNS name, we're just going to create a call rancher sign at local dot local like that because I don't have a DNS name uh, so this VM might not be able to re resolve this IP address with this name um, so it might not be able to find it so we have to manually create it but if you have a DNS server sitting somewhere you don't really have to do all this information because those get taken care of by the DNS server itself so I'm going to press Control X again because it's nano so you say over here say save modified buffer yes gonna save it in here if you look at it again one more time that particular IP address or this is the IP address of the machine and this is a URL uh, of the rancher that we're gonna use is there so I'll show you how this URL will be used later when you install your rancher here so I'm gonna close here clear up here so that sets up the host itself now to set up the uh, or rather install the helm you run this command here once the helm is installed you're gonna add the rancher into your repository followed by Jetstack and then uh, Cert Manager CDR CRD I'm sorry and then once you have those in, um, repos you're gonna install the Jetstack along with the CRD as well once the installation is complete now you're ready to install Rancher using this command here the domain name that I was referring to just now would be this guy here so whatever you set over there this is the domain name that you're gonna have to enter IP address is not something that the uh, rancher entertain at the moment here so if you enter the IP address here it does not work just keep in mind that and then also the bootstrap password I've set it as this you can set it whatever you want uh, once that's done you're gonna hit enter and then the installation is complete I'm gonna clear this guy here so basically what you're gonna do is uh, have a look at your pod and see whether that uh, rancher is ready and installing right now or not but it's right now looks like it's creating the container for that rancher there so you're gonna give it a few more minutes while we wait for the rancher to start up let's set up the host table on my computer like I said I don't have a DNS server on this system here so um, I'm gonna have to do everything manually so you're gonna click on this guy here I'm gonna type notepad and I do have a notepad plus plus you're gonna launch the notepad as an administrator here that is important because uh, the file that you're gonna edit requires administrative rights and then you'll come up to this now I'm this app is launched as, as an administrator now basically what you have to do is you go to go to file open you're gonna go to C Windows system 32 then you go drivers etc and then there's a file called host you're gonna open that file here over here you're gonna enter the IP address of the rancher here and then 194 and basically put the rancher dot like that as well so that you can um, uh, associate this DNS name or the domain name with this IP address on on your rancher there so once that's done click on this icon control s to save or whichever your text editors uh, as recommended and after that you're gonna close this or minimize that guy here let's have a quick look at our note uh, part here make sure that they are all running looks like they're all running the key thing is that this these are the wrenches this is the web page and the hooks that you need and make sure they're all running and completed we'll put this guy here so the next thing you are gonna have to do is just open your browser and in here you're gonna type the um, the, the domain name like that and you'll be confronted with this because it's using HTTPS and I don't have certificate you'll get this kind of setup but if you do have certificate great you know you might not see all this information click on this guy here proceed to rancher local and you'll be confronted with this so this password is what you had uh, set up as a boot pass bootstrap secret password mine was RABI123 and then login as local user and then put a check here to accept it continue and then now you're good to go your rancher is running and everything is happy here so there's a couple of things I want to show you and be aware of if especially if you're using a VM let's say for example um, you have a minimum requirements like for example if you put DF it's a disk space usage you can see um, the your rancher uses a few different disk spaces so right now 
on my, uh, if I do VGS, this VM has a capacity of about uh, 60 gigabyte. Uh, let, me, let me try the other way, uh, VG display. Yeah, you can see that it's got about uh, 60 gigabyte worth of capacity. With 60 gigabyte, you know, uh, uh, there's no other, uh, no other deployment or anything installed on my Rancher. I have a leftover capacity of 42% available, right? So 60 would give you that much. So just be aware, like I said, uh, if you are too tight on your disk space, you might have some pain point as you install it. And on this side here, if you look at uh, VG display, I've allocated uh, 40 gigabyte here. You can see, and if you look at uh, DF here, the worker node is already occupying 64%. So if you're planning to use this for um, more intensive work, um, bigger disk space will not harm. You know, the bigger the better. So like I said, this is only 40 gigabyte and it's already 64% used with nothing installed in it. If you can see, there's really nothing in there. There's no deployment. There's no um, deployment or workload, anything like that, right? So let's go ahead and install uh, Longhorn and come back and see what the impact are on the disk space here. Okay, first of all, you're going to add the Longhorn. Again, you're going to work on the uh, control node itself. You're going to add the Longhorn repo into the helm using this command here like this. And then update and basically install the Longhorn using that command. Once that done, let's keep an eye on our port here like this. You should see that the Longhorn containers are being created, initiated, and slowly. So give it a few more minutes, um, sometimes depending on your CPU bandwidth, it might take a bit longer, but you can always keep running the command and see, make sure there's no error or anything like that that comes up. Okay, looks like everything is running right now, creating container. Yeah, so there's a few more left to go. Uh, let's see. CSI. Yeah, that should be relatively quick. But, but nevertheless, in the interest of time, let's have a quick look at the uh, DF here. So on the controller, control node itself, 46% is pretty st stable. But uh, if you add more nodes into it, this will start to go down. So just be aware, if you're planning to add multitude of nodes, make sure you have a bigger capacity this space. And let's look at the this guy here. I don't anticipate any size changes on this one here. Oh yeah, I just did chew up a bit more, I guess. So we do DF here. On the worker 2 you can see you can see how this is also 40 gigabyte and it's very close to filling it up completely you can see that so if you look at uh, say VG display yeah, this is also 40 gigabyte same as this guy here right so I don't know how they divvy up the uh, the capacity so just be aware so 40 20 is not enough but 40 you know is coming really close to or you know maybe just nice <laughs> to install Longhorn and we are done and after that you can't use it for anything else. So just be aware of those uh, Details there. So bigger the capacity the better it is um, If you like this tutorial, please like and subscribe other than that Leave a comment say hi. Take care. Bye